You are my answered prayer. This is my story of a 35 year old prayer that has been answered. Okay, it's Friday, July the 17th, 17th and we're going to meet uh, Mike's son after 35 years and finally found him. We're going to meet Kevin Chitwood. Where are we going, Mike? Well, we're going to go up to Iowa to see Kevin. My son, I hadn't seen in 35 years, never seen him in person. And uh, so we're going to go see Kevin today and his, uh, his mother, his adoptive mother, and visit with them a little bit. So, Margaret. Miss Margaret, yeah. Answered prayer. Yeah. Going to Oskaloosa, Iowa. Yeah, here we go. What'd you say? Uh, I was just thinking, I've been looking for this day for 35 years. You just don't even know what it's been like all these years. Wondering where my son was at. Knowing that I had one out there somewhere, but not really knowing where or how he was or how he was being raised or if he was dead or alive or just not knowing but I've always had this prayer for all these years that God would allow me to be able to find him before I die and God is faithful <laughs> he's answered the prayer through DNA testing <laughs> ancestry.com helped us and so we're headed that way to see looking forward to it. Tell us what happened. Well, just to kind of give you a backdrop on this 35-year-old prayer that I've been talking about. Uh, I, well, I started to say I was just a typical teenager, but I really wasn't typical, and I still ain't typical. But anyway, as 18, uh, when I got, when I turned 18, I took off and went out to West Texas into the oil field, working in the oil field, and uh, you know, we worked out there for a pretty good little while, and then finally the oil shut down, boom, the boom was uh, went to bust, and uh, everybody was losing their jobs, and I ended up coming back to Missouri and uh, started drawing unemployment and everything, and we were making more on unemployment than we were when we were, you know, what most people around that area was making on wages, so, you know, we were foot loose and fancy free most of the time, most of us kids that age. You know, we were into the old, as the old saying goes, sex and drugs and rock and roll, and we were definitely into that back in the 80s. And uh, of course, I was no different. I was, I was the type of guy that I'd pretty much try anything within reason. I didn't get real wild with everything, but I was pretty, pretty wild myself. And uh, so I hung around there for a while, and uh, ended up working with one of my brother-in-laws and sisters for a while farming. And as that began to play out, I decided I would go to work for my oldest brother. And uh, we were traveling around doing commercial remodel work uh, for White's Cafeteria, as they were called back in those days. Years ago, there used to be different kind of cafeteria, cafeterias around where people would go in and eat. Piccadilly's was one, and, and certainly White's Cafeterias was one. Well, anyway, we traveled around and we would do those uh, remodel jobs at nighttime. We'd have to sleep during the day and work at night. And the first one we went to was in Joplin, Missouri. And so, you know, being my nature, being hog wild and woman crazy, I guess, you know, and party, just love to have a good time. I wasn't out trying to cause any trouble or anything, but anyway, I got to, you know, flirting and chasing around with girls or whatever, and certainly did that. And, uh, but anyway, I met a, a nice girl there in Joplin, and. We hit it off real good and, and uh, started hanging out with, with each other all the time. Well, as time went by, uh, Cindy was her name. She ended up getting pregnant, and I didn't know this at the time. The job was over, and we were moving on to another cafeteria in Wichita, Kansas. And uh, so basically in my eyes, you know, we had broken off the relationship. I didn't know she was pregnant. And back in those days, there wasn't uh, the type of telecommunication that we have today. 
certainly wasn't smartphones and and uh, smart technology that we have. Matter of fact, back in those days, there wasn't even really cell phones to speak of. And uh, you know, we had pagers, and that that come later. I didn't have a pager, but anyway, you know, it was back in the old payphone days where you had to have you know a quarter to slug the payphone if you wanted to call somebody. So it wasn't so easy to reach out and get in touch with somebody if you didn't have you know like a home phone number or something like that so anyway with me traveling around uh with my oldest brother it was hard to to, to get in touch with us and uh so apparently she had gotten pregnant and uh had no way of reaching me or getting in touch with me and uh, i guess she carried the child to term naturally she did obviously uh but apparently she put it up for adoption and so i'm thankful for that that you know she had options she could have aborted the child and went on with her college education and her career i think she was uh looking into a type of career in law enforcement uh, investigations i think maybe i'm i can't remember exactly but anyway um uh, she didn't do that she carried the child and put it up for adoption and so the the boy was adopted out and i didn't she was able to finally get in touch with me three months after the adoption had happened so i didn't find out about having a son until three months after now he was born new year's eve in 1984 and so march of 1985 was when i first uh, found out about having a son somewhere. Never really knew exactly where. I just knew that he was adopted and he was somewhere in Iowa. And so at that particular time, of course, several months had already went by. I'd already met another girl that I liked a lot. And uh, eventually, uh, that was March. <clears throat> March, and actually two months, excuse me, <clears throat> two months later in May, she and I ended up getting married. That was my first wife, Rebecca. And when we found out in March, we left Texas. And uh, because I had went back to Texas after that and was building apartment buildings. And when I found out that there was a boy, we left Texas and went back to Joplin, Missouri to see what we might be able to try to find out or or you know figure out or see if we could even find him or whatever the case was well anyway i ran into some roadblocks and wasn't able to do anything didn't get anywhere at all never found out much of anything and so that's pretty much the way it's been all these years up until just recently so that's kind of the way it was in 1985 um you know in march of 85 i run into a roadblock like i just said but went back to uh, my mom and dad's home in, in northeast Arkansas, southeast Missouri, over on the other side of the state from Joplin, and uh, stayed there and worked with my dad for a little while, and like I said, me and the girl I was with at the time, we got married two months later on May the 1st, uh, 1985, and we moved back to Texas because that's where I had been working in the apartment construction business and different things and I wanted to go back because it was a good job paid work real well and everything and I just like Texas so I went back there uh, my heart was always in truck driving all my life and so as the apartment situation kind of slowed down a little bit I got into trucking and I've been trucking most all my life since then and uh, but just over the years as time has gone by it's always been rough. It's been something that's been in my, in the back of my mind. It's been in my gut. It's been something that I've longed for to, to know about him and to finally eventually meet him and see him. It's been, uh, it's been depressing, I'll just say that, uh, quite a bit. There's been some, some, some really bad times for me thinking about it, you know, and seeing other people, other friends and family different ones having children you know and thinking why why lord why am i not able to have children i know i have one somewhere but i don't know where he's at is this some kind of you know payback for me is this some kind of penance i'm having to pay that i can't have children i don't know this answer i don't know but it's been 35 years i just know that god is faithful and he still has answered this prayer so i'm going today to meet him but 
just to kind of add a little bit more to that all these years as they went by uh, I kind of got straightened out and uh, started going to church and everything changed my life from the party lifestyle and uh, just continued to uh, follow the teachings of Jesus Christ and studying the Bible and, and uh, I've been a pretty astute student of the Bible over the years and I just know that there's a God in heaven that loves us and cares for each and every one of us and cares about the little uh, intricate details of our life even minute details uh, God is concerned about it and this was a concern of mine and so I voiced it pretty regularly and as time would go by every year there'd be uh, you know Father's Day Sunday at churches and I never would go because it was so painful for me I just didn't like being around when they would you know want all the fathers to stand up to acknowledge them as uh, on Father's Day or whether they would pass out a pen or a little uh, flower to put on their lapel or whatever it may be you know I just it just bothered me so I just avoided it. I never would do that and I haven't went to a Father's Day Sunday service all those years ever since and just because of the pain of it and so anyway as time went by I've often thought in the back of my mind one of these days I'm going to get a knock on the door I just kept thinking that was the way it was going to play out but that's not the way it played out and uh, so here in just a little bit I'll share a little bit more how this actually came about how we were able to find him well before I get into telling you a little bit about how we found Kevin I want to kind of bring you up to date on the life in that 35 year period uh, of course I mentioned Rebecca as my first wife when uh, we we found this out we lived together for several years uh, traveling uh, across the country in a big truck and at the age of 24 years old I bought my very first big truck and I uh, was self-employed and I, I've always been a, a hustler as far as working goes and I was always trying to uh, strive to be the best at whatever I did. Uh, very competitive in a lot of ways. A lot of people said, matter of fact, I even got the nickname of being hog that, uh, you know, I was hog wild. I was always uh, going to one extreme to another on some things and I am an extremist in some ways. Uh, I have an addictive personality and uh, what I mean by that is, you know, I just, it, I can go from one extreme to the other, as I just said. And uh, so me and Rebecca worked all those years running cross country and uh, did real well. But as time would have it and went by, different things went on. I would have, uh, I've, I've often had some issues over this thing of not knowing where my son was or whatever. And, and I, I understand it now more than I ever did before because of the depression it would bring me into some de depression times where I didn't want to have anything to do with me anybody too much or didn't have a whole lot to say or I'd fall into these deep bouts of depression and um, Rebecca and I stayed married about 11 years or so we ended up getting a divorce and um, I married another young lady that was about 11 years younger than me her name was JC and uh, JC helped also to try to find Kevin. Uh, she was a little savvy, well, real savvy on the computer. And of course, computers were new back in those days. And uh, she did what she could do to try to find Kevin. And uh, to no avail, we, we wasn't able to get very far on that either. And um, she ran the truck with me for a while. And then uh, I ended up, my mom and dad were getting older and I wanted to move back to Arkansas from Texas and try to be closer to them. Uh, during their final years and they've both since passed on but anyway I moved back home to try to be closer to them and uh, JC come off the truck and I end, end up eventually selling uh, the last truck that I had uh, well it really wasn't the last truck but the last truck I had while she and I were together and uh, she like I said she tried to do what she could do to try to find uh, Kevin's birth mother which her name is Cindy and um, she went that route to try to find him but we, we never were able to get very far with it and so I got to give those two ladies credit for trying to help and um, about 10 years later we, we, we stayed married about 10 years and she and I divorced also and I went several years single by myself I was kind of just bouncing from 
here to there, you know, I just, I was just kind of a lost soul really bouncing around from here to there. My mother died in 2006 and that was probably the hardest thing that I've ever went through in my whole life. And uh, man, it throwed me in a really deeper depression for a long time. And uh, I battled with it, struggled with it. And I would mask it by cutting up and carrying on. I'd mask it by uh, one extreme to the other, uh, whether it was women or whether it was partying or whatever. I fell back into that. And uh, God allowed me to do that for several years until uh, one day I wrecked my Harley. I had a brand new 2010 Electro Glide, black Electro Glide. And, and uh, I just uh, was, I went too far one day. and. Uh, God allowed me to uh, to live through that, and I still wear the scars from it. I've got them on my face now, and uh, it was just another addition to all of this. I went through a divorce. My mother died. I stayed single. I bounced around from women to women, from one woman to another. Never really any serious relationships. Just really didn't care a whole lot. I just had this I don't care attitude. In a lot of ways and I'm really not that way and I, I didn't it was a bad place to be and um, then a little bit later on I bought another truck and I went out on the road for just a little while I made my rounds I went all around all the way around the United States and I even went up into Canada and when I got back from Canada I knew I was pretty done I didn't want to do it anymore I'd been driving for 30 plus years and I was just tired I was wore out got rid of my truck and, and uh, stayed around home there in Piggott area for a while and then I met my third wife which is with me now and that's Teresa and uh, Teresa's a good girl she's got a big heart she's she, she'll help anybody do anything and she uh, she's always been uh, real eager after I told her the story and I told her the story early on in our relationship uh, because she has one son Noah and that's all that she has. She had a stepson with her previous marriage, but he doesn't really have anything to do with us much. But uh, anyway, she was very uh, eager to try to help and find my son the best way she could. And she had done a lot of research herself. She's real good on the computer too. And of course, technology has changed and uh, she uh, she done some research to try to help find him. And uh, here in just a little bit, I'll share some more with you how that led up to um, how we've actually really got in contact with Kevin. Well, I just want to back up a minute. I thought about something I said earlier, uh, but both of my wives prior to Teresa, uh, they both had told me at different times in our marriage that they wished that I would uh, be able to find someone to have children because I never was even to ha able to have children with either one of those women. And uh, both of them, we went uh, to the point of uh, in vitro fertilization. And But anyway, never had any children, so that was part of the depression. Uh, one other thing I said earlier I thought about that was actually wrong in the timetable. Uh, before I had my wreck, I had actually bought another truck after Mama died. I'd already went through my second divorce with JC, and I, Mama had died, and I went back out on the road. And uh, then I ended up selling that truck off and getting rid of it in 2008, uh, 2009. And then I was just doing other things from there on, working locally around uh, our area, driving for different people and different things, brokering freight also. Uh, and then. Uh, I, uh, in 2010, I bought, bought that Harley and ended up wrecking it. That's, that was a timetable. 2012, I met uh, Teresa, and we dated uh, for a couple years, and then we ended up getting married in uh, October the 4th in, in uh, 2014. And uh, she's always been really uh, willing and able to try to help me find Kevin because she knew the pain, and uh, she was afraid in her own personal life. She's told me that she was afraid that she might not have been ever able to have children either, but she ended up having a child, Noah, and that's her only child, uh, natural child. And so she's had a, uh, you know, a deep heart for trying to help me find my son. And uh, how this played out, how we come about finding him was unfortunately, 
my brother next to me, David, his wife passed away recently on uh, December the 13th of uh, 2019. And uh, we ended up going to the uh, funeral in Kansas City where she grew up. And uh, we had taken one of my other sisters with me, Marilyn, uh, that lives in the same town that we do. And uh, we were riding along and we were headed to Kansas City Marilyn was in the front seat with me. I was driving and Teresa was in the back seat and she got a phone call from her aunt and uh, come to find out her aunt had been adopted uh, as a girl and uh, she had found her dad but she was telling a story to Teresa uh, that her son, Brad, Teresa's first cousin, had some guys that either worked for him or he knew that they, they worked together or whatever. But come to find out, they had had a DNA test and it ended up that they were kin to each other. They were brothers. And so they were laughing and cutting up and carrying on in the back seat about that. Her, uh, Teresa was on the phone with her aunt cutting up about that. Well, when she got off the phone, uh, I just out of the blue said, well, that sounds kind of like me. And Marilyn said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, didn't you know that I had a son when I was 20 years old? And she looked at me with the weirdest look. She said, no, I've never heard this. And I had told my mother and dad, of course, me and Rebecca had moved back from Texas. We went to Joplin to try to find him. Couldn't do any good, so we went from Joplin back to Pickett, Arkansas, and stayed with mom and daddy until we got married, and then we moved back down to Dallas. Well... Marilyn knew, never knew this. I never told her, and apparently mom and daddy never told her either. And uh, a little while later, she called her husband, my brother-in-law, Myron, and asked, did he know anything about it? He said, no, this is the first I've heard of it. So anyway, it was kept secret for many years. The only people that really knew it about it family-wise was me, my oldest brother, Johnny, and his wife, Karen. And uh, later on, my other Bren uh, sister, Brenda, had found out from Karen Karen had developed lung cancer and was uh, eventually passed away, but she told she uh, she had told Brenda that she knew that I'd had a child, but we just never could find him. So that's kind of how that played out, and we talked about that on the way up to Kansas City a little bit. I kind of filled Marilyn in on all the details like I am you guys right now, and uh, Marilyn is a, has always been a real... Uh, family person as far as genealogy is concerned and and everything like that and she's uh she's always been real deep into uh finding ancestries and and genealogy and we're talking about ancestry she's on ancestry.com and uh when she got back or when we got back home from the funeral she uh happened to do a little research on a computer on ancestry and she had found a person that was real close in the matches of the uh, the DNA matches to her uh, so close that he could actually have been her grandson or even her uh, nephew or whatever. And so she said it was, uh, her in her words, she said it was like a slap in her face as she realized what it was going on, that that was possibly my son because it was a male and he was uh, about 35 years old. And we knew the time frame because I told her what time frame this happened in 1984-85. So anyway, as it turned out, uh, this person that was not on Ancestry but had had DNA done, but there was someone that was managing his account. And uh, it turns out it was his, uh, his aunt, uh, Brenda, and uh, Marilyn had got in touch with her and started, uh, you know, a conversation back and forth about this situation, about this person being so closely tied genetically and so that's kind of how this has played out and we just went from there uh she called me and told me how close the genetics were in comparison to her own daughter and granddaughter and so she knew that he was very closely related to us and so i agreed to have a dna test done and uh, we did do that the dna test come in on march the 16th of 2020 and it was a 100 percent match that he was my son so we proceeded to contact and uh, make contact with the person that was handling his account to stay in touch with him, let him know what was going on. And it just kind of progressed from there. Uh, then we uh, decided later on that we would have a Facebook uh, live meeting amongst ourselves. And so he and I and his mother, his adopted mother, Miss Margaret, sweet little lady, and Teresa, 
we all four had a conversation together to initially uh, meet one another on the, I mean, we could see each other, but we've never met in person. And so with this COVID-19 situation that's went on and everything, there's been a lot of uh, restrictions on travel and things. We just wasn't able to. And in the type of work that I do now uh, in the farming industry, as far as fertilizing uh, crops and things, it's a busy time of the year when uh, spring of the year happens. And we're just, uh, we're so busy, we can't really take time off. And so now it's just been a, a time where we were, we're able to actually slow down a little bit. And I decided to uh, take take a few days off and, and go up and meet him as, as soon as possible. And so that's, that's where we're at today. So we're almost into Oskaloosa, Iowa now. And uh, we'll, we'll fill you back in here shortly. Well, we're getting ready to meet Kevin. So here we are, Oskaloosa, Iowa. July 17th, 2020. Wow. Here we go. Rock and roll. Here we are. Oskaloosa, Iowa in the motel room waiting on Kevin. We're going to meet him for the first time 35 years in person. So hopefully we'll get that on video here in a minute too. You nervous? No, I'm not really nervous. I'm, I'm excited. I'm kind of anxious, but not really all that nervous. Yeah. I say that now, but I may be, I don't know. Who knows what'll happen. We'll see shortly. What's up, man? How you doing? All right, how are you, buddy? All right. All right, well, here we are in Oskaloosa, Iowa. As I finished the, uh, telling you last time on the video, we were on our way up here uh, to meet my son I've never met for 35 years and so I just want to introduce you to Kevin Chitwood and uh, we've been here a couple days and we're getting ready to go back home now but we've had such a good time and everything I just want to introduce you to Kevin so we just want to say hello hi <laughs> I'm Kevin is that all you're gonna say what do you want me to say <laughs> hi I'm Kevin welcome to my home my humble commode <laughs> I've had to deal a whole weekend with Teresa and her loud mouth making fun of me I didn't make so fun when I come back down commode? there my humble commode <laughs> I, I like to lighten the mood. Uh, I like to make it fun. Teresa said the nut don't so, fall too far from no. the tree, right? So. So, <laughs> I didn't make fun of you. I just hugged you a lot. Yeah, I, I got a lot of affection that I don't usually give. So <laughs> they, she should feel lucky. I do feel lucky. Feel so, loved. It was good meeting everybody here. I'm glad they came up and enjoyed their time. So, Bye. Huh? Peace. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Well, we just left Iowa a little while ago. How about Kevin, huh? What do you think about him there? He's kind of crazy, ain't he? Pretty good guy, good looking kid. Well, he ain't a kid, he's a grown man. But anyway, we had a great time visiting with him and, and his mother, she's such a sweet little lady. I never got to meet his dad. Uh, he passed away back last September, I think it was. But anyway, I just thank God that he allowed those two to raise him during this time. For whatever reason why I didn't get to, I don't know. But anyway, I've had a 35-year-old pray, uh, prayer that has been answered. I've been able to find my son and, and uh, meet up with him in person. And uh, so we're real happy about that. We've had a great time uh, getting to know each other. And I look forward to growing our relationship from here on out. And uh, so we appreciate you guys watching this. Thank you for your prayers and support. And before we go, I just want to say one thing to you. Man, don't ever give up. Don't ever lose hope. You know, I've always trusted in the Lord that he would answer this prayer. Uh, like I said, it's been 35 years I've been trying to find my son. And God finally answered that prayer for me. So don't give up hope. You know, there's, there's ways of doing this. We went through Ancestry to do this. And uh, it's a great program. It's really helped us through DNA matchup. And so, anyway, we appreciate you guys watching this. You guys take care. And we'll be coming back to you soon one of these days. Y'all have a great day.